morning you guys I just have a message for you and I want to tell you this morning that um, it doesn't matter what it doesn't matter what you've been through it doesn't matter what the devil is trying to tell you it doesn't matter what's going on in your life like it doesn't matter like how you feel um, it doesn't matter if if something's bothering you if something's just driving you crazy um, or making you feel confused or if something makes you feel like just that like just if something makes you feel confused and you're like I have no idea why I feel that way or I have no idea what to make of this it does not change the fact that Jesus loves you and it doesn't change the fact that he died for you um, you know in life we go through many different things but when it all comes down, that's the most important thing, right? Um, because obviously we're not here on earth to just live temporary lives and, you know, try to leave a good mark and do our best and enjoy it. We're here for so much more. Um, we're here to make sure we go to heaven. We're here to... To make sure that that we figure out who God is and figure out what to do about that, and we and if you if you don't know, then I'm going to tell you. But if you know, then you know that that God is everything, that God made everything, that He made you, He made me, and that. He sent his son Jesus to die. He sent his son Jesus to die for us. And there's nothing that we can do to change that fact. There's nothing that we or the devil can do to undo his love for us, his sacrifice for us, right? Um, this is something that has happened. And it cannot be changed. It cannot be reversed. And um, I just want to say that if you feel confused or if you're like, if you feel confused or if you feel lost, um, you don't have to be because, because Jesus loves you and that's, you know, the sad thing is, is that over time that can, that might be, that might be a cliche, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's a cliche, it's the truth and, um, you know, at the very least, he sent me here to tell you this this morning, and I want to share that with you. And um, I just want to tell you guys that, again, you don't have to worry. You don't have to. You don't have to wonder about things. You don't have to wonder if God loves you. Of course, he loves you, right? Of course, he loves you. He loves everybody. He loves everybody the same. He loves all his children, right? and he loves you even when even when you sin he doesn't love he doesn't love when you sin but he loves you even though he loves us all even though we're sinners he loves us even though we're not perfect right we can't earn his love this is not about earning his love we can't earn his love but he loves us anyway and that's the most exciting thing because I mean, how freeing is that? I mean, it takes all the pressure off of us, right? But anyway, I just wanted to speak to you guys this morning and tell you that. That there's nothing that you can do to change how much Jesus loves you. And there's nothing you can do to change how much God loves you. And I say them separately, but they're the same, they're the same person. Jesus is God. God is Jesus. And yes, Jesus is God's son. And yes, God is Jesus' Father, but Jesus is the Lord. God is God is the Lord. God is Jesus. It's kind of like complicated if you think about it too long, but it's really not. Right? So I just want to tell you guys that this morning. Um, whatever you guys are going through, just stick with it and um, and turn your eyes upon Jesus. What is he telling you? What is he saying to you? What's he putting in your heart right now to share, to say, you know? And 
this is something else. At the end of the day, um, I don't want you sitting here guessing whether you should do what you should do, right? You, we need to do what we need to do, right? And so I was in a thoughtful mood first thing this morning, which was not very long ago at all, minutes ago, um, coming out here and thinking about coming out here, sitting in my chair, sitting in the chair and out here in the yard. And, um, you know, it's been on my, it's been on my mind about making a video because the first few videos I made felt so effortless and I felt like I had so many things to say and now it's different. It's a different, I'm in a different place. So it was hard to, you know, it, I, I sat here for a little while to debate about what I was going to do and, but then I felt what Jesus was saying and I felt what I was going through. And that's the thing. We all go through the same things. We go through the same things differently. We go through the same things the same. We go through things that um, seem so unique to our circumstances. And here's the thing. They are. But here's, here's also, here's the other thing. They aren't. Because... People have been where you have been. There's been someone who's walked where you have walked. There are people who have been through, there are people who are hurting, there are people who don't know what it's like to be loved. There's people who need help. There's people who have been in an addiction, people who have addiction, people who are going through an addiction. There are people, right, that are troubled. And so no matter what you're going, no matter what we are, and, and, and people, whatever we're going through, we have people we can look to to help us. And we can take heart in the fact that there's people who have been through the same kinds of things that we have. And maybe we haven't met them yet, you know? But I just want to say to you guys that that's true. I know that's true. People that have been through, you know, no man is an island, just like they say. No man is an island. Nobody is abandoned and just lost forever, right? Nobody only knows what they have gone through and 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 they're the only ones who know and um at the end of the day the lord knows he knows what you've been through he knows what you're going through he knows he's he's going through it with you right now he's walking with you right now and that's the most beautiful thing and it's not always easy to remember right because we go through things that that try to make us forget and we go through things and we think about them and we're like man what's going on this is crazy and and we might not feel as close to Jesus we might not feel as close to God and his presence we might not feel as close to to our Heavenly Father as we do other times because of what we're going through but I want to tell you that um, first and foremost God loves you and he's going to be there for you. He's there for you. He's going to be there for you. He'll always be there for you. He will never leave you nor forsake you, right? Um, but secondly, I love you. And I'm here for you in some capacity. I'm here for you in prayer. I'm here for you in conversation. I'm here for you in support, listening ear, anything. I'm here for you. So... I just want to leave that with you guys and make sure that you know that you have a friend who loves you, a friend who cares about you, but that you also have a Heavenly Father who created you and designed you and loves you, right? And when we don't feel as close to Him as we'd like to, He is just as close to us as we've always been, as He's always been. We need, it's up to us, we need to draw closer to Him, right? And so I just want to share this with you this morning. So you can feel his presence and know the truth. But I want to tell you that God loves you. And he's taking care of you. And when you don't know what to do. And you don't know how to do things or who to turn to. He is right there. And he has made a path before you. Right? We can't see the forest for the trees sometimes. We get lost in the woods. We can't see the road that we're on. We're, we, can be, we can be driving on this road and we might not even be able to see the actual road, right? We might not even, 
Look, there's going to be times when you can't see in front of you at all. You look down to look at your feet for some reference to, to familiarity, to um, understanding and what is, and you're not even going to be able to see your feet. It's going to be so crazy. But nevertheless, God is still with you. Yeah. And here's the other thing. He's made a path for you. God knows the way everything's going to work out. He knows how many, he knows every hair that is on your head. He knows every, every thought that you think. He knows every feeling in your heart that beats. He, every time your heart beats, he knows what's going through your heart. He knows what's going on in your mind. And he knows what's in your heart. And so, I'm not trying to say this as like an expository thing, like, you know, yeah, you better not hide anything from God because you can't. <laughs> but it's true. We, we really can't. But, you know, even better than him knowing us inside out, no matter what we try to do, no matter how hard we try to run and hide from him, he knows us inside out as a friend. He knows us. He knows us. And, you know, that's such an important thing to think about, right? Because how many of us are struggling to be heard? How many of us are, are struggling to to um, be seen, to be noticed, to be understood? And we try so hard to get people to understand us and to get people to know um, not just what we're going through, but we could fight our entire lives just to show someone who we are, just to hope and pray that someone knows who we are, but they already do. And this is a fight that we do not need to fight anymore, right? We don't need to fight that fight anymore because God knows who we are, right? He knows who we are. He knows us. He designed us. I mean, there's so many things we can think about that would just completely obliterate and annihilate the confusion when we think about the light remember turn on the lights right turn the lights on whatever's going on it's like even if you don't know uh even if you don't know what you're gonna find even if you're scared to turn the lights on turn them on anyway right because um <laughs> well for one that's how we make that's how we make sense of things um how do we know that God designed us? How do we know that he loves us? He made us. It says so in his word. It says that he will never leave us or forsake us. It says that, you know, he'll never lie to us. It says that, it says that he knows our, his plans for us. He knows the plans he has for us. Which mean he has, which means that he has plans for us. How exciting is that? And that his plans are to prosper us. Okay, that's pretty huge, right? I mean, think about that. God's plans are to prosper us. That's a pretty big deal. And not harm us. So we can rest in that. We can relax in that. And just, I just want you guys to get a sense of how big his arms are. How wide open his arms are for us, for you. How much he is hugging you. How much he is holding you. How much he is holding you while you are sleeping in his arms. While you are trying to figure things out. And he says, he says, don't even worry about it. <laughs> he says, don't even worry about it. I've got you, son. I've got you, kid. I've got you. So, I just want you guys, I just want us all to think about that and reflect on that. And, and that's a special treat to do. And when we do that, we're going to be set free. Because, <laughs> and that sounds like, the funny thing is, is that I know how that sounds to some people. I know how that can sound, but I want to debunk it right now. So, when I say something like that, when I make a promise, it sounds funny. I mean, well, it doesn't necessarily sound funny, but it may. And it pales in comparison to God's promises, right? But when we 
declare what God's promises are. I want you to think about that. You know, there's a lot of people who say that like certain things in Christianity are just wrong. They say there's name it and claim it. They say there's the decree and declare thing is a joke and a lie. Well, I'm not going <laughs> to... Here's the thing, right? I mean, just stick with me and think about this just like this. What do we know about God's promises? We know that they'll never break. We know that he doesn't break his promises. So what do we know when we share God's promises? We're spreading the truth. We're sharing the truth. We're sharing a promise. That's such a huge deal, right? How does it feel when someone promises you something? Amazing. But how does it feel if someone promises you something and you've had your heart broken? It can feel scary. It can feel, it can feel like it doesn't even matter doesn't even matter what they say doesn't even matter what they promise because because we may have learned to not get our hopes up or we may have learned to not get excited about things people say or we may have built walls to protect ourselves right from being hurt because of promises that have been broken in the past this person making the promise might have a, might not have a good track record Right? But it doesn't matter, right? Because God's promises are complete. He always keeps his promises. Just think about that today. Think about that. Think about the Bible that you haven't read in a while and you may have think you have you may have thought or you may even still be thinking like yeah, that's a nice thought and everything, and I know what you're saying, Justin, and I know that's true and all, but, you know, blah, 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 you know, whatever, 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 whatever. Um, I don't really want to read my Bible because, you know, I just don't feel like it, or I'm just, you know, I'm going to do my own thing, and I know what I'm going to do, and blah, 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 or, you know, or even, like, even if you have that thought that says, like, you know what, why would I read the Bible? I mean, that book is so old. How does, how does that even relate to me? How does that even make sense now? Like, dude, like, bro, do you even realize right now that it's like COVID-19 like is everywhere and like it's 2021 and like don't you even know like the real world right now? It's so crazy, bro. How is your Bible, how is that Bible going to say anything about what's going on today? How is that Bible going to fix anything today? Well... I want to tell you that it doesn't matter. <laughs> and you might think I'm crazy, but it doesn't. It doesn't matter. God's promises are still the same. That He's not changing, right? What does God do? He does a lot of things. But what's the one thing he doesn't do? Change, right? Does not change. He is always who he is. And we can concentrate on that and remember that. And when we don't know what to do in our lives, let's just get back to the base. <laughs> let's get back to the basement. Let's get back to the basics, and and get to the basement. Get to your get to your prayer closet. Get on the floor. Get on the knee. Get on your knees, and pray and ask God, what is going on right now, Lord? Help me. I am so stuck. I am so confused. I am so confused. I need help. I do not know what to do. I am so confused. Ask Him. What does his word say? You have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask amiss, right? So let's ask things in faith, right? Let's ask things in faith that God is going to answer us, right? Because why wouldn't he answer us? He is God. He keeps his promises. What does his word say? I already told you, you know, if you don't ask, you're not going to get it. You know, if you want to know, ask. How are you going to get through the door? You knock on the door, right? You don't bust the door down. That's not how you get, how do you get it? How does anyone get through a doorway, right? Do you come up to the door with a crowbar? Do you come up to every door you see and break in? No, of course not. Why would you ever do that? You don't do that, okay? Don't do that. And um, you knock, right? That's how you get into a door. Or you turn the handle and open the doorknob, right? 
open the door. But if you can't open that door, and you've tried to open that door, and it ain't opening, you ask, right? Ask God. Ask God to open the door. It's as simple as this, right? Stop being stuck. Just ask. Ask God to help you. If you don't, if you don't ask Him, and you're sitting around crying because He's not doing anything, then I know what to tell you. Ask Him. Stop trying to make it happen on your own and ask Him. Knock. Knock on the door. Don't be afraid to knock. How many times, how many times have you gone to do something you've been so afraid to do and you've finally gotten the courage to do it and then you go and do it and it's like, wow, it's like, what was I so afraid of? You open the door and a fresh breeze hits you. You open the door and your grandma's standing there with a tray of cookies and she's like, oh honey, I'm so happy, I'm, ha I'm so happy to see you. What took so long? How come it took you so long to get here? I've been waiting for you. And these cookies, I just, I had these cookies cooked for you. But they're cold now. But don't worry, I've got some fresh ones coming right out of the oven right now. How many times has that happened to you? You need to do something about it. You need to ask God. You need to ask God what to do. You need to knock on that door. You need to say, God, can you tell me what's going on? Can you let me in on what's going on? Please, can you tell me what's going on? And I'm telling you right now that if you do that in faith, you know he will answer, right? Have that faith. I'm giving you some of my faith because if you don't have it, I'm giving you some right now. You have no excuse. Sorry. <laughs> so, you know, and what's the other way it works with faith? How much faith do you need to have? How much faith, how much faith do you have to know that it's all going to work out? How much faith? It's a real question. It's a real question right here. How much faith do you have to have? How much faith do you have to have for your, for your, um, how much faith do you have to have for cancer to go away? How much faith do you have to have that justice will be served? How much faith do you have to have that, here's a good one, and some of you aren't going to like it, but it's too bad. How much faith do you have to have that President Trump is going to be back in office? That he is going to be put back in office. That he is not going to have to run again after already, won, after already running and already winning. How much faith do you have to have for President Trump to come back into office? For God to put him back into office miraculously, divinely, right? How much faith do you have to have for that to happen? How much faith do you have to have to get the job? How much faith do you have to have to... Um, be healed how many faith how much faith how many faiths how many faiths do you have to have how much faith do you have to have for any of this to happen how many how much faith do you have to have for your daughter or son to return to the lord your brother or your sister to return to the lord your mom or your dad to return to the lord how much faith do you have to have for that to happen how much faith it's a really simple answer And if you know the answer, then you just got even more faith. You don't need hardly any faith at all, right? Because who's doing all the work? Now, this is the crazy part, and this is going to separate some. It's going to separate the, the boys from the men. <laughs> who's doing all the work? God. Did you know that? He's doing all the work. Why? Because... Is it up to us? <laughs> Think about that. Is it up to us to make everything work? Is it up to us to fix all our problems? Is it up to us to go to heaven? Is it up to us to be saved? Is it up to us to save us? Nope. It's not. It's up to us to make decisions and do things, but... It's not us. It's not up to us to make it all work, right? Because, because why? Because we can't make it work. God can make it work. And guess what else? Here's the kicker: we can do all things through Christ, through Christ who gives us strength, right? So, we actually can. We can't by ourselves, 
we can with Christ, right? And so, how much faith do you have to have for anything to happen? A mustard seed. Now, that might be an unfamiliar term, because how many guys are professional, um, professional spice users? How many of you guys are professional cooks, right? You know all the different herbs and seeds and things like that. You know, like a mustard seed, what in the world does that have to do with faith? At why do you have to have a mustard seed in order for faith to work? Because you have to have faith, plain and simple. You have to have it. In order for things to work, you have to have faith, right? And so that can be so scary because you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have enough faith. How much faith do I need to have? This is taking so long. I can't believe this isn't happening. But all you have to have is a mustard seed of faith. That's all you have to have. A grain of sand. In other words, a grain of sand. Because God takes care of the rest. You have the faith. You make the move. You make the call. You knock on the door. You ask and receive. And have faith. And it will work. It will work out. Why do we know that, that it works out? Because God has promised it will work out. How do we know that God has promised it will work out? Because God's word says in Romans 8.28, all things work to the good of those who serve me. All those, all things work for the good of my children, basically. I'm summarizing that verse, but that's what that means. It means that things work out for children of God, right? Who is God? Who is he? He is our father, right? Who are we? We are his children, right? Okay, good deal. You're with me, okay? So, if you're watching this and you don't have any faith at all, I'm giving you some of my faith now. And if you want it, all you have to do is say yes. And that's pretty cool because how does that work with Jesus? What do you have to do? Say yes, right? Accept him, right? Accept him. Just say yes. Don't say yes to the bad stuff. Of course, just say yes. Just say yes to God. Um, so I love you I love you guys so much and I'm so glad that you watched this um, because I know I know that God is going to bless you and I know that it's not all just about getting blessed it's not all about being blessed but it's about getting closer to God and learning who he is and living the life that he has designed for you to live for all of us to live and what is that life what is that life like well, it doesn't exclude God. It doesn't, it doesn't, the life God has designed for us does not include being lost in the world forever. It doesn't include being blind and lost. It includes fixing our eyes on Jesus, turning our eyes on Jesus, fixing our eyes to Zion. Set your eyes to Zion. Turn your eyes to the Lord. That's what we need to do. So, do that. Just do it. Right? Just do it. I don't know if you could tell, but I could keep going forever. So, um, guess what I just realized? I will. <laughs> I will be going on forever. Are you? Right? You are, right? Right? Did you, did you ask Jesus to save you? Did you get baptized? That's something that's interesting, right? What does God's word say about baptism? What does it say about getting baptized? Does it say you need to go get baptized in order to go to heaven? I'm pretty sure it does. I'm pretty sure it does. But that's a good thing to look into, right? So now, if you're like, I was going to read the Bible, but now by this time I'm going to do something else. Now you better read the Bible, right? <laughs> You better read it. So just figure it out. Just find out what God is saying. Um, I've told you. I've told you enough. Do your own. What do they say nowadays? What does everybody say when they try telling you things? Say, I can't, I can't convince you of anything. I can't tell you anything. Do your own research. Do your own research. Right? So the ball's in your court. It's a brand new ball. It's nice and shiny. It's never been used. And it has been used. And it's broken in. And it's perfect. And it's ready. It's all pumped up. It bounces perfectly. 
it has only, it, it, you know, it's just the perfect ball, right? And it's right there in your court. So, so what are you going to do? Are you going to like, are you literally going to just like sit there and look at it? <laughs> are you going to, Are I mean, how long do you want to look at it? The ball is in your court. Are you content enough? Is that enough for you? Having the ball in your court, is that all you need? Are, are, are you now content to just sit there forever and do nothing because you know the ball is in your court? Well, uh, that's not how basketball games are won, son. Okay, so uh, how do you win? <laughs> you you participate, right? You do your part. You you don't just you don't just win without trying, right? We have to do something. We have to do something. It's up to us to do something. It's up to us to do something. It's not up to us to save our skins. It's not up to us to do it all, because none of us can do it all, and it's all been done. It's all been done before. It's all been done for us, right? That doesn't mean that God doesn't have a special, unique plan for us. But again, the ball is in your court. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to pick it up and use it? Or are you going to sit there and look at it? Are you going to kick it out of your court? Are you going to leave it? Are you going to leave the court? What's going on? Why are you doing that? Just use the ball, right? Get your scripture out. Get the Bible out. Do what you're supposed to do. Do your own research. Do your own homework. Ask God. Do the asking. He's not going to answer what you haven't asked. Well, actually, he does. But here's the thing. You better ask, because if you don't ask, you're not going to have. Right? So, hopefully this is enough to get, to get you guys going this morning. And if it's not, then I have faith that it will be. And I have faith that you will get going anyway. Because I know that all things work. Work out for good. For those, for God's children, for those who follow his commands, for those who listen to him. Romans 8.28. Look it up. See what it says for yourself. Tired of doing all the work around here. Just kidding.